use him in the healing anointing. Uh, it appeared numerous of time on TV and uh, it's supernatural. Many of you see it off. And it's a program that I love because I love the supernatural. Love to see the power of God. And lo and behold, God has brought to us one of his choice servants with us. And we're so delighted, along with his lovely wife, Deborah, who's a prophetess in our country. And uh, 
So we're just, we've just had this greatest time to be with you. We want to thank all of you. Every one of you have been so kind and so generous and uh, so good to Deborah and I. And uh, so give yourselves a big hand clap. We you know it's going home and comfortable. Uh, Brother Woodfork and Brother Paul and Sister Nelson and all, everybody. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we are just, uh, and then Dan right over here gave me some barbecue sauce. Shonda. Woo! All right now. I told him I can't do no barbecue right now. You know what I mean? But, uh, You know, when I'm not doing any meetings, it's all on me. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Listen to my next statement. You cannot afford to have a thought in your mind that Jesus didn't give you. somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor, it's too expensive for you. Expensive. You, cannot afford you cannot afford to have a thought in your mind. Keep a thought in your mind. Dwell on a thought in your mind that Jesus didn't give you. The alcoholic wakes up with alcohol on his mind. The drug addict wakes up with drugs on his mind. The millionaire, his mind is on his money and his money's on his mind. <laughs> Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, neighbor. Your life is going to move in the direction, the direction. of your most dominant thoughts.
is to put it under the authority and lordship of Jesus Christ. I say mind management, mind management is the key, is the key to, being an to being an overcomer. Now, why am I talking to you about your mind? Let me tell you why I'm talking to you about your mind. Because whatever's in your mind, that's what's going to manifest. Want, do you want to know why I know that's true? It's because you were made in the image and the likeness of God, and whatever is in the mind of God, that's what's going to manifest. So sometimes what you got to do with, with your mind is you need to do a training. Sometimes your mind is so messed up and your mind is so uh, uh, trashed and damaged that there ain't no point in keeping it. <laughs> Look at somebody say, lose your mind or lose your mind. Good. 
good stuff? Them arms? <laughs> Can I tell you the truth? I'm going to just tell you straight up the truth. This is as God is my witness. See, I can get the revelation of God in my spirit, but I can get so mentally and emotionally and physically tired that the revelation that's in here can't get to me. <laughs> that brother gave me some herbs. My head done cleared up. <laughs> Which means you better watch out. <laughs> Woo! Because it's all now. <laughs> you know I ain't playing. I ain't playing. I ain't playing. I'm going to show you I ain't playing. Stand up. You used to have a problem with anxiety. <laughs> You used to have a problem with depression. You used to have like panic attacks. There used to be problems with your head. <laughs> Sometimes you get so nervous, you felt like jumping out of your skin. If you could run away from yourself, you would have taken an exit. You used to have sleep problems. And God's been healing you of anxiety, fear, and depression. Even though you still have some depression now, some mood swings, you used to have it. Is everything I told you true? However, now, which the Lord has given you, by the way. You're getting ready to have a super abundance of peace. Look this way. Even things that happened way back when you were 10, 11, 12, and 13 in that period. Even that has been dissolving, and it's going to dissolve to the point where it's going to have zero effect on your life. Amen. And you know what I'm referring to during that specific time period. And here's what's even louder. You made some mistakes in your 20s in terms of some decisions. Isn't that right? Now, I've told you all that you need to know, right? So when you step out of this aisle, the Lord's going to do something in your central nervous system. Because 
God's going to continue to do some healing on the inside of you. Real strong joy, real strong peace. Um, in fact, some of your physical energy is going to begin to return. You will actually begin to feel younger. Okay? You're gonna, your energy level is going to actually increase. Okay? And uh, you study this, and the Lord's going to start to use you with women. Isn't that right? That's right. Lift up your hands. Close your eyes. Look at somebody say, this is an impartation service. Yeah. Look at somebody say, she's fixing to get an impartation. Yeah. Can I tell you what she's fixing to get it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now. Do you have dreams that generated fear? Yes. 
Yes. Somebody was chasing you. Yes, they did. I'm in their dreams now. Look at somebody said, better watch your mind. You overcome most of the fear. But not all of them. Because you have a fear of making mistakes, which is why you won't step out. When you know the Lord told you to do something, say something. Tell me I'm wrong. I know I ain't wrong. I was awake.
This is only the beginning. You're going to lose 25 pounds. I was in no shame in this mistake. And so, there was a pastor's wife there. I said, you're going to lose 50 pounds. Well, next time I got back in Mississippi, I was in Mark's Point. That's just the king of the circus, having lost 50 pounds. I don't know how I said that was going. I saw this woman. She weighed 400 pounds. I gave her a prophetic word. You're going to supernaturally lose weight. One year later, she comes to my church. I don't know who she is. She has supernaturally lost without dieting 230 pounds. I used to have people weigh themselves before they come to church. You think I'm playing with church? I pray for them. They go home and get on the scale. Scrub up. 15 pound loss, 20 pound loss. Had 15 pounds by morning. Oh, you get ready to get hit again. I speak the miracle of supernatural weight loss into her body. And Lord, increase the word of knowledge. Let her have more revelation concerning discerning of spirits. And Lord, let her have night visions in addition to dreams. And Lord, speak to her and give her the interpretation. Here comes the anointing for us. Three, two, one, take it. Here it is. Coming through my hand. Stay with her. You should come next. Look at somebody say, unusual service. Unusual service. Somebody say, he doesn't preach the word much, but if he was here Friday and Saturday. You know that? You know it'd be a totally different deal. <laughs> Did I pray for you earlier? Oh, but I ain't done with you. You're gifted too. Are you the one that I prayed for about prophetic? Oh, well, you got word of knowledge too, don't you? Want me to help you recognize it? Okay. 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 Um, you haven't been minding your own business. Hopefully you have. <laughs> and somebody came to your mind? And you began to pray for them? And you found out later that there was mission? Yes. Word of knowledge. Has this happened to you more than once? Has this happened to you lots of times? You would, would you like to know the key to your gift? Prayer, intercession, praise, and worship. So um, listen to me, Karen. This is very important. Um, sound is very important for you. Sound um, does something to your mood. You need some soft praise and worship to take you into the realm of the spirit. Mm. Mm. <coughs> Here comes an anointing. Manifest more and more the word of knowledge, dear Jesus. Manifest more and more the gift of prophecy. I release it on my there it is. Oh, supernatural weight loss is beginning in you too. People lose a pound a day, every day. Like one lady, she lost like 35 pounds. Another lady, she lost a pound a day for like 30 days. Another lady, she lost 100 pounds. Without that, I'm talking about without that.
about tomorrow. Um, she's a, she's a woman that I How old is she? I think she's 50. How old are you? 36. Anybody in your family got blood sugar problems? I'm not sure. Any, you have any relatives here? Where? Your sister? Anybody in your family got blood sugar problems? Not diagnosed. Not diagnosed, but do they have?
You on this side? Come. I got a great feeling about it. Oh. What are you up here for? I had to do some dreams for you guys. Did somebody be uh, having dreams? I've been having them for years. I'm like Superman. I be like living it like flying. Like Where you going, church? Right here. Okay. Um, how old are you? 41. Um, ready? Watch my question now. Are you more spontaneous or do you have to have a plan? Spontaneous. Do you need to plan more? There. <laughs> Has the Holy Spirit ever talked to you about getting in the Word and praying right after you get up in the morning? Yes. Would you say you have a little problems doing that? Very much. Tell me if I'm awake. <laughs> How are your finances doing? They ain't. <laughs> Did you ever used to read the word regularly? Yeah. Do you used to pray regularly? Right yeah. Have you kind of slowed down lately? Yeah. Did you actually used to fast? Yeah. Have you fasted lately? Last one. What day? What's the day? <laughs> what's the day? Oh, okay, <laughs> Last month is, was what month? Oh, okay. Last month would have been in October. What month was it? November. Got a in the room. Hello! <laughs> Has the Holy Spirit been dealing with you about praying and fasting more? Yes. When you start listening to God, He'll start listening to you. You sit up here talking to him about your finances. He sit up here talking to you about the way you relate to him. And so, because of the way you are, the Lord's got to give you your attention. Bam! You got it now, ain't it? Amen. Woo, I'm something, ain't that girl? <laughs> Minister. 
Let's talk about that. Yes, sir. Be patient, ain't it? Very. <laughs> Follow me. Come here. Hey, trainer. Get up, man. Get up. <laughs> no, no, no. Over here, trainer. Man, I don't like that, man. You know, even when I was in shape, I stood in the <laughs> You see what I just did? If you fast and pray and obey the Lord, you will do exactly what I just did. Oh, Have you ever seen yourself praying for the sake of God healing? Yeah. How did you see yourself doing? In, 90, in 1994, it was a fire. It was a fire in '94, and I went to to a guy in a, a wheelchair. I'm not a wheelchair, an ambulance. And I just believe God. I touched his feet. I said, "You won't live." And what happened? He lived. I don't know. I ain't never follow up with the guy, but I just believe when I left that present that day in '94, that uh, he lived. So did you feel like you were supposed to pray for sick people? Not in general, I never missed thought of praying for sick people. I just like people, period. It's just never been sick or uh, it not to just like people, period. Amen. I'm telling you, if you will fast and pray, have you ever fasted before? Yeah. What's the longest fast you've ever been on? Mm, straight. Straight, bro. <laughs> about seven days. Probably about three or four days straight without this water. Look at my thing. So, you gonna repent? I know you are. You good brother. Stay right here. 
Unless you got a chest, you can work. <laughs> that hurts your gift for lifting all them weights. That make you work up in the church. Come on. Say, Jesus, I repent for sins of omission. Forgive me for not fasting, for not praying, for not studying your word like I used to. But I'm getting back to it, Lord. Let a fresh anointing come upon me, a fresh hunger for the word of God, for prayer, for fasting, and seeking your face. Lord, anoint me to work with men and young men. Lord, bless my finances as I obey. Get ready, because here comes the Holy Spirit. Three, two, one. There he is. And Father, release the gifts of healing into his life right now, into his ministry. <coughs> another wave.
they were instructed in what's called the Song of the Lord, which is a prophetic song, which brings the revelation of God, who he is, and what he's saying, feeling, and wanting to do into the earth. You dream music? Yes. I'm fixing to tell you right now, you're going to dream some more music, but it's going to be some new sounds that you've never heard before. Lift up your hands. Okay, you have, you have a desire for the healing of the sick, don't you? The Lord is going to give you songs of healing. That's called the release of healing in people's hearts, minds, and even their lives. Close your eyes. Y'all ready? Do not pray, just receive. Here comes the anointing, the prophetic anointing. Here it comes. Three, two, one. There it is.
That's a blessing, bro. You know what I mean? A blessing. <laughs> I have angels that work for me that work all the armor, but I have this one angel that works for me. He has a sense of humor. So I was doing this meeting in the South, and this woman walks up to me. She was a nurse. Her name was Lauren. She said, I saw your angel. I said, did you talk to him? She said, can I? I said, yeah, he's really nice. This particular one I'm talking to. About. So we do another service, and she sees him again, and he sees that he, he sees that she sees him, and he goes. <laughs> True story. So then she says, "What's your name?" And he goes, he smiles and he goes, "You don't need to know me. You just need to know Jesus." <laughs>
casados. I curse this thing. Die, dissipate, and disappear. I curse it to the root. Die in Jesus' name. Some things you don't heal, you curse and they die. Anybody you notice one arm is longer? Come up here. If you notice one arm is longer or shorter, can you make your arms as straight as you can. You need to be up there. Anybody, look, look at your neighbor. That's why you keep your arms straight. Anybody, if one arm is shorter or longer, all right, for you. Straight as you can. This is going to benefit somebody. <coughs> can you tell the difference? Look at your neighbor. Anybody one arm is shorter? Anybody? Quick. <coughs> I need some water, bro. Getting dry. Anybody? Quick. Sit down. Y'all stay here. What about I want to stay? Stand straight. You're basically leaving. Stand. stand straight. Finger straight. You're really even too. You can sit down. You got a problem. Straight. You can't. She can't straighten it. That's the problem. You up here with her? Straight, straight as you can, Mom. You got a problem, you should stay. Straight as you can. You got a problem, you should stay. Finger straight. You definitely got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you got a real and like a little big problem. Was you the big problem? Okay. Let me move all you guys down right here. Just move stuff down. Did I see you? Did you slip up here? Did you sneak up here? Did you sneak up here? There we go.
need a link of that one. Straight as 
straight as you can. Keep your shoulders square. Bring your hands together. Keep them straight. Y'all got to get down for them. Now, how many of you can see this? Raise your hands if you can see this. Hey. Who is our camera guy here? They gonna do no good up there, bro. <laughs> Come quick, break your camera. Okay, you get it. Okay, you put it. 